I didn't really want to do this talk this morning, I'll be honest with you. Um, Jared asked me, I don't know, a couple of months ago maybe, and I was like, oh, but I'll be on holiday that week, the week before, I don't really want to be thinking about talking. Um, so Stuart said, well, don't worry about it, Jackie, we'll do it together, you know, we'll, you know, I'll help you out, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. So, so anyway, halfway through last week, I was like, so, so what's happening? So what's happening? Who's doing the talk? And he was like, well, I'm doing the game, I'm doing the money, I'm doing the worship, I'm doing the prayers, and I'm like, I'm doing the talk, aren't I? <laughs> so, but I always find when I um, don't necessarily feel like doing it, that it's a talk that really, really I need to hear. So it's more, a, it, uh, hopefully it, it will speak to you, but it's certainly spoken to me. Um, so, it's interesting how that passage started off. Thanks, Paige. It said, teacher, tell my brother to divide inheritance, divide the inheritance. So it's telling Jesus what to do, isn't he? How often do we think we know best? Jesus, just tell that person, just make them know that they've upset me. Or, Jesus, you know how much I need this. Or, Jesus, no, I'm praying about this. I'm praying that, and I'm praying that that person will not do what they they've said they'll do. But actually, it's not up to us to tell Jesus what to do, is it? That was his first first mistake, really. And Jesus went on to say that you need to guard against everything that is to do with greed. That person wanted their inheritance before it was due for them. Um, I, I wonder if the Amazon story is the same in your house. I don't know about you, but um, sometimes I come home from work and there's a parcel and I'm like, oh, who's, did, who's ordered something now? And I look at it and it's for me. And I think, what have I ordered? I can't think for the life of me what I've ordered. And that, I was just thinking about that the other day and thinking, how awful is that? How much do I need this that I've ordered that I can't even remember what I've ordered? I clearly don't need it, do I? Then I'll open it and I'll think, oh yeah, now I remember. Now I remember that was that. And I was feeling a bit fed up that day. And I thought, oh, I'll just order this from Amazon and that will cheer me up. Okay. And the reality is that we live way, way above what we, how we need to live, isn't it? We, we, we accumulate things. The media is very good at at persuading us to buy something. I'm working on Stuart at the moment. There's this hoover, okay, and it's electronic, and you just set it off in the morning, it hoovers your house for you. And um, I, don't, I don't think it works on the stairs, which is where it falls down, literally, probably. But I would really love that hoover. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't love a hoover that you could just set off and come back home and your, your house is all done? And there was an offer the other week, and I was like, oh, go on, shall I get it? Shall I get it? And he's like, but they're hundreds and hundreds of pounds, Jackie. And you know what you like with hoovers anyway? They always, yeah, we've got a bit of a history of hoovers in our house. And, um, yeah, they always do break. So I know really that I don't need that hoover. I don't, it's not, but, but it's very creatively marketed to appeal to me. And... The world convinces us, doesn't it, that we need a lot more than we actually do need. We are convinced, aren't we, that we need the latest... I was hoping there were some sort of more young people apart from Paige here, that we need the latest PlayStation. We need the latest, which is still five, isn't it? PlayStation 5. And the latest Xbox. Uh, we need the latest gadget, maybe, Hoover, whatever, to help us in our life. But I've always been inspired by our son, Stephen. I, I don't know how many of you know Stephen, but um, Stephen's traveling at the moment, and he has a little backpack, about that big. And he's traveling for 17 days, and he had that same backpack when he was traveling for eight months, okay? And we went to Spain last week. We had a suitcase this big for two of us for 10 days. He's gone off for 17 days with a little backpack, nothing in a hold, nothing. And, and Stephen has lived like that for a long time. And in fact, Christmases and birthdays have been a bit of a nightmare. I'm like, what do you want? I don't need anything. I don't really need anything, Mum. 
don't buy me rubbish. Don't just wrap up rubbish just so we, I've got something to open. Uh, and he's, he's always lived like that. Um, and I just think that God must love the way Stephen lives. He must love that simplicity of actually, I don't need lots of stuff around me. He will buy books. He will buy um, stuff to go run in, gear, but stuff that lasts so that I'm like, I can't I wash the same stuff all the time. You know, surely you must need a new T-shirt for running or a new vest for cycling or new something. But no, not really. Don't, don't need it. I don't think it's that God doesn't want us to have possessions in some way and reward ourselves when we work hard. I think God likes to reward us. And we do, it is, there's nothing against using our money for, for buying things. It's when we get caught up in buying things and when that becomes our object, the money or the thing becomes our object of focus. And so that almost takes on an idol kind of status. So, you know, when you've really, really wanted something and you've saved up for it and you, you can't wait and, or you've got to wait till your birthday and that sounds really, really mean because your birthday's not for another three months or whatever. And, and then when it comes, you're like, yeah, I've got that thing. But then within a couple of days, you're, you're over it, aren't you? You kind of, oh, well. On to the next thing. It's so easy to become like that. And the Bible says that where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. And I was speaking, thinking about that this week and thinking, gosh, do I really want God to, you know, do I really want him to think that my heart is for all these things that I'm ordering? Because I, I don't want him to think that. That's not where my, I want my heart to be. And the rich man in the story just talks about himself, doesn't he? Did you hear him ask about anything else? He's just like, what shall I do about all my corn? Well, I could build a bigger barn, and then I could store all my corn in my barn, and then I will reap all the benefits of it when it comes to harvest time. And then next year, I will do this. He doesn't ever think about anybody else. It's all about himself. There's no mention of any gratitude to anyone for helping him work or sharing anything with anyone. And then he learned the hard way, didn't he? Because he'd spent all this time gathering up his crops, storing his crops and making his barns bigger. And then actually, he didn't even get to see the, the fruit of his labor. And Parker talked a couple of weeks ago about um, a friend of his who had lots of money and everything and then was just suddenly taken. And, and like, we can have control, can't we? We can have control over our money, we can have control over our possessions, whatever, but ultimately God has control. God has control over our lives, doesn't he? And actually, as Christians... Our lives and our possessions aren't our own. When we become Christians, we give up those rights. We give up the right to anything. We say, Jesus, we're yours. And actually, we have no rights anymore. We don't, earn, we don't have the right to have a big house and a big, a big um, car and a nice fancy car, whatever. And it may be that that's what we do have. And it, maybe we have a big family, maybe we have a small family, but that right is not ours anymore. We deny ourselves when we give ourselves to Jesus. And that's what's really spoken to me this, year, this week, I think, is that what would I be prepared to... Well, not, it's not even what am I prepared to give up. They're not mine in the first place. So how different would I live if I, if I really, really lived like this? my life would be very, very different. And when we invite Jesus in, we surrender to him and we say, I surrender all. Okay, and we sang that song a couple of weeks ago and I didn't really read through the order of service, but apparently we're singing it again. So um, that's a big ask, isn't it? And that's a big promise, I surrender all. Am I really surrendering my material things, my house, my 
Am I really surrendering my family? Am I surrendering my job? Everything that God has blessed me with is because he has blessed me with it. I am sort of stewarding it. I'm looking after it. But ultimately, he has our lives, doesn't he? We give him our lives. We give him our all. So I think the challenge is really, what are we holding on to? What are we storing in our barns? What are we trying to keep for ourselves? The passage goes on to say, don't worry. God will provide everything we need. Look at the birds of the air. Okay, so why do we worry about what we need? Why do we not trust God more? Why do we not just look at the birds of the air? When I was on holiday, I saw this woman and she had this really nice dress on. And I'm, I'm not really a dress person, actually, but somehow I managed to take seven dresses on holiday. And I'd only worn four of them, but this one that was on this lady was really nice. <laughs> so I thought, oh, she must have bought it on holiday. It was kind of a casual sort of holiday dress. So I, we went in every shop. <laughs> Poor Stuart. Poor Stuart, yes. And I'm saying to him, just stay outside. I'll be in and out. I'll be, you know, I'll be there in a minute. Don't feel like you have to come around with me. And he was saying, oh, because he didn't actually see this lady. So, like, was it like this? Because you say it was like longish. I'm like, no, it wasn't like that. Was it like this? So you said it was like tie dye. I'm like, no, it wasn't like that. And I was searching for this dress. And I, I was thinking, by the time I found it, I'll be back from holiday anyway. What's the point? And also, I don't wear dresses only on holiday. One, you know, so. Really, there was no point. And that's why I knew this week that God was speaking to me. And like, how much time did I waste just looking for that dress when, you know, I'm on holiday. So I need to get my priorities right. And I just wonder what our priorities are and what we're storing in our barns that really we don't need. <laughs>